Help me God. So help me God. To all of the members of the court, I am pleased to welcome Justice Jackson to the court and to our common calling. <laughs> applause, applause. Welcome back to CBS Mornings. That is Supreme Court Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson. She was sworn in in 2022. We all know this. She is the only black woman ever to serve on our nation's highest court. And now the justice is out with a memoir. I love this title, Lovely One. It's the meaning of her first and middle names, Katanji Onika. She joins us for her first live broadcast interview about this book, and we are very honored, Your Honor, to have you in the building well, today. Thank you for having me. You should have me. seen all the people, everybody dressed up a little. We're all sitting up a little straighter <laughs> in our chairs to have you in our, in our presence. But I want to go back to that video for a second because yes. it's almost like dreams come true. On your Harvard application, you said... Uh, one of the reasons you want to go was to hopefully fulfill your fantasy of being the first black female Supreme Court justice. Yes. So take us to that moment right there. Well, you know, I had always known about the court. Yes. Um, when I was young, and I talk about this in the book, I learned about Constance Baker Motley. Yes. Who was the first black female judge. And I just thought being a judge would be amazing, especially because my father was a lawyer. And he would cite cases at you at four. He, he was. Would ask you for your opinion. He would sit at the dining room table at four years old when I was four. But yeah. not politics? You always wanted to be in the law. I always wanted to be. Because your background also seems suited for politics. Oh, no. 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 <laughs> but you chose the law. I did. I did. I followed in my father's footsteps, for sure. I'm, I'm curious about your, your hearings, your confirmation hearings, because they seem grueling to me. They seem brutal to me. Yes. What did it feel like? Did it feel like that to you as you were sitting in the chair? Because I was very struck by Cory Booker's words, but tell me what it was like for you sitting in that chair with yes. a lot of incoming. Well, it was, it was definitely uh, a test of stamina. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it was a long time, a lot of questions, but, you know, I was thinking throughout the whole time of what a White House uh, staffer had said to me what did uh, they when, say? when we were preparing. She said, well, you know, you can get upset or you can be a Supreme Court justice. Ah. And so I thought, oh, OK, <laughs> this means I really have to keep my composure. Which and, you did, I, and you did that. And I did. I want to get to some news of day for just a second, then we'll get into your backstory, because your backstory is amazing. I told you, I'm already envisioning the movie. Who's going to play you and who's going to play Patrick? I'm very smitten with your, your love story. We'll get to that in a second. Thank you. So this summer, President Biden proposed setting term limits for Supreme Court justices and other, uh, other reforms for the court. When you heard that, is it something that you're on board with? Do you like the idea of that? Well, you know, what I think about when I think about proposals like that yeah. is the fact that we live in a democracy and that people are engaged and they're thinking about the court, what the form and structure and uh, uh, role of the court is, and that's part of our democratic process. And, you know, term limits have been debated for the longest time. In the book, I talk about Alexander Hamilton yes. and thinking about how long Supreme Court justices should serve. So Where do you stand a, on it, on term limits? Well, you know, I am... So you're um, a young woman. I, I am a young yes. woman. Um, you know, I, I'm not participating in the actual political debate. This mm -hmm. is going through the process now, but I'm very interested in the fact that people are really engaged in the democratic process and thinking about the court. Mm -hmm. You don't have an opinion one way or the other, Justice Jackson? No, I am okay. interested in what people are right. saying about it. I, I hear you. Here at CBS, we... We recently aired an interview with your colleague, that would be Justice Neil Gorsuch, and he said in his book, he warns about the overreach of federal law and the overcomplication of our legal system. Do you think he has a point? Well, um, I have not had the pleasure yet of reading his book. I know he has a book out about this issue. Um, I think these are issues that are being debated. Um, whether or not there are too many laws or too few laws is also a part of the democratic process. Mm -hmm. um, I guess my big uh, concern, if you want to talk about what the justices are thinking about, mm -hmm. is a concern about uh, the role of the court mm -hmm. and uh, staying in my lane mm -hmm. as a justice and making sure that all of the branches of government are uh, observing their own respective roles. You, you had what some would call a drop the microphone moment, if you will, what you're, you wrote, and it's been described as fiery and searing, two very strong words, the dissent in the Idaho versus abortion case. And I want to get this, read this verbatim. While this court dawdles and the country waits, precarious, 
well, let me start over. While this court dawdles and the country waits, pregnant people experiencing emergency medical conditions remain in a precarious position as their doctors are kept in the dark about what the law requires. The court had a chance to bring clarity and certainty to this tragic situation, and you said we have squandered it. You certainly didn't mince words there. Why did you want to make that point so strongly? Well, you know, a dissent is the opportunity for, uh, you know, the justices to express their differing views with yeah. respect to what the majority has done. And I uh, had a different sub opinion, and I wanted to make clear why I thought what I did in that situation. Were you worried that people would think that that was too strong, or was that not something you thought about as you were writing? Because people were calling it a masterful opinion. Oh, well, I'll let other people comment as to what they think of it. I mean, I, I wanted to express as clearly as possible my views mm -hmm. on this issue, and the court has a tradition of that, that lots of justices uh, use terms and phrases that they want to use in order to make a significant point. Well, Justice Jackson, we're going to do something we rarely do. We're going to ask you to stick around because there's so much we want to really get to the heart of the book. And I have a, I have a picture that is very searing for me in a positive way. I wonder if you and I feel the same about this. I want to talk about that picture in particular. Mm -hmm. And I want to find out what it takes to prepare. You said 19 hours to prepare for your confirmation hearings. What exactly did you do and how did you do that? Well, Hold um, that thought. Oh. <laughs> it starts with, well, same with us, you're watching CBS Mornings. Justice Jackson is sticking around. We'll be right back. <laughs> Starting with well. <laughs>